morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out to B-Side San Antonio 2019. Y'all, lovely bunch. So just a shout out to a couple of our uh, gold level sponsors, St. Mary's University, thank you for having us, um, USAA, Trend Micro, Digital Defense, and SANS. So first talk up is going to be David, um, as you can see based on his slides, and uh, we'll bring him up now. Guys, my name is David Evenden. Um, as you can see, my handle is Jedi Mammoth. Um, I am an. I'm going to set this down one second. I'm an offensive intelligence analyst um, coming from the offensive security space. Uh, started my time um, up on campus at the NSA. These guys right over here, and uh, got some really good training, really good background. Sort of, you know. Uh, produced a good segue for me and for the rest of my career. In fact, some of the people that trained me and were my top tier managers that I even still have a ton of respect for are in this audience today. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but, but they're here, so I really appreciate that they're here. Um, and uh, it's actually making me a little bit more nervous, I think. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. If I pass out, just wait for me to stand up. Um, all right, so here we go. What we're going to talk about today is doing an analytical deep dive of using attack metrics of foreign intelligence activity and the MITRE attack framework to, um, to sort of show uh, and tier of how you can go back home and track and perform analytical metrics for your management or just to show uh, good use cases for how you can uh, get additional value out of your tracking and hunting. Again, um, kind of one of the things that we go over from a threat intelligence perspective is we only track foreign intelligence activity, terrorist organizations, and highly funded crime syndicates. So if one of you guys were to go home, you know, download Cali, get an interpreter session, punch it into one of the organizations that we cover down for, I don't care. That's not my job. I don't track that. I'm not going to come find you. No one's going to come find you, probably. Um, you know, it's just because a lot, a lot of those are going to get blocked before they even uh, move out of the first, you know, off the first machine. Some of the organizations that we monitor, as you guys probably know what those are, um, different APTs and, and where they're at geographically. We do this, um, we do this fundamentally for uh, for DHS. Right now, they're tracking. Uh, actually, this is this is not updated. They're, they were tracking 23 TAs in October. They're tracking uh, 29 TAs right now, which is threat actors. So they they don't use the APT because every single organization, for whatever reason, has their own names. Um, which is great, makes my life suck. But um, and so, kind of what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to initially step right into it. We're going to sort of move in uh, as we're kind of going along. If I say something that doesn't really make any sense, or anybody has a bunch of questions, just feel free to interrupt me. This is going to go pretty quick, but it'll be uh, it'll be nice, and then it'll be pretty engaging if you guys have questions. So one of the first things we do is ingest into Panda data frames. I mean, if you guys want to see code, you're welcome to take a look at it, but it's not going to help you. Um, you know, kind of the way that we we analyze and, and, and push down as we tier based on sectors, so energy, comms, finance, critical infrastructure, sectors, and then um, every single domain or signature has its own ref ID. That ref ID is then um, linked directly to a threat actor, APT28, 29, so on and so forth. That way when we um, perform data analytics, put it onto a canvas, a Jupyter canvas of anything like that, we can actually get valuable intelligence and start to actually actually perform some predictive analytics off of that data. And we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit. That's not really the point of this talk, uh, not predictive analytics, but if you guys have questions after this, I'm happy to, to t d dive into that. Um, so as we sort of move into there and we, we, we have that outlined, then we, um, we, we can actually create different types of heat maps. The heat maps will then kind of show you the actor activity within individual sectors. As you look at that actor activity in different sectors, you can go back through and see things things like an active breach, for instance. So um, from here, you kind of look at normal activity, and then when, it, when everything, you have like significant outliers, you know what a breach looks like. Now, if you see this type of stuff and you think, okay, well, this is 
different than everything else. It must be a breach. No, you need to go back and actually talk to the organization if it's your own organization, just to verify. You need to verify as an active breach and what they're seeing is malicious. Because it might just be some, you know, one of you guys performing analysis and trying to call out to this domain or, you know, using this piece of malware all the time, and then it's not an active breach. So, you know, talk to your defense teams. Don't just do crap. Um, but then as we actually push that data back together, we can take a look at breach actor attribution. So you know that these domains associated with this activity in this sector is this actor. Um, and again, this is really good to be able to push this information back up to your, um, I mean, managers, anybody who's you know, paying your paycheck, for instance. Um, but it's also good for you to kind of know, uh, as, as you pull apart the TTPs associated with how they're attacking you, um, kind of know and cover down with what your gaps are. Um, yeah, just basically kind of be able to cover down on what your gaps are and how um, you need to like, sorry, they're talking is like really, I'm like trying not to listen to what they're saying, but it's, it's, yeah, Shh. we'll just see if that works. Um, uh, yeah, so basically, I, I, as you actually experience active breaches and those TTPs associated with the breach, it'll allow for you to know what you need to, you know, based on the time series analysis of these active breaches, we're expecting to see another breach between the dates of the 6th and the 12th of April. And sure enough, we saw that. Right now, we're actually in an active breach time period. We're expecting to see an active breach between the days of June 6th and June 12th in the energy sector of the United States. So we kind of pull out um, I mean, sorry, we pushed out a, uh, you know, a call for responses back to that, kind of say, hey, are you guys actually seeing active breaches? Come back and let us know. Um, and I mean, from the people that we are not covering down on. So if we're covering down on these organizations, obviously we're going to see that, but um, just for the rest of the community. So right now, everything we've talked about is the, the data that we're using within our orgs. But now we want to do a spot check. So in that spot check, we take the TTPs associated with what we know and we tier that against MITRE ATT&CK TTP analytics. So we access this programmatically by pulling the information down from their website. Nothing that we do is I'm going to go do it manually or so on and so forth. It's all automated. As we do this data automated, we can we, we push the data back into a CSV and the CSV we can start to push together like another heat maps. So just to kind of explain what this is, this is a, uh, this is a heat map in the bottom of um, of TCPs in the bottom, they're actually techniques. They don't they don't store tactics and they don't really store um, procedures. Right now, they're only storing techniques. And then um, so on the left hand side is all of the actor groups that MITRE tracks, and then on the bottom is all the techniques. This is not really helpful for an analyst. It's just a cool slide, um, so you guys can kind of see how many there are. So as we kind of move in and we 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 say how many times do I see a technique used? used um, and how many actor groups are using that same technique, this is kind of where it gets interesting. Now we see a pattern of attribution of techniques to actor groups. So they're using you know, specific techniques. And as we you know, view that type of data, we can say, are we seeing any TTPs crossing country lines? You know, we see something used over the course of you know, a six month time period, and then this TTP stops, and then this organization starts using it again. Uh, as, as we see that, we know, let's just say, for instance, we might know that they're sharing relationships with organizations like, I don't know, North Korea and China, for instance, if that were happening. We, we, we could then take and look and see a TTP used by China. It stopped being used because it's you know, sort of run their course, and then all of a sudden, North Korea starts using it. Now we can actually start to put together a better map of what organizations are using what TTPs, who they're sharing with, because then we can actually say, who's North Korea targeting? Targeting. We're watching China use this TTP, and they're targeting this organization. In six months, they're going to stop using it, and then North Korea is going to start using it, and they're going to start using it to attack whoever their targets are. Now we can perform analysis and be prepared for these types of attacks in these sectors six months before they actually happen. Um, and so, you know, pulling this data out and, and, and monitoring and taking a look at it, we can also do link analysis on the sectors, the actor groups, and their TTPs. One of the things that we do right here, for instance, is um, these are all of the unique 
techniques. So if you see these techniques in the wild, the probability that it's this actor group is, is, is really high because they're not being used right now by any other actor group. Um, but when we look at so some of the more difficult techniques and how they're being shared across lines, um, you know, pr performing a larger analysis of the actor groups and their geographical location to include, okay, so here, here's another thing. Say, for instance, in the MITRE ATT&CK framework, they're hosting past the hash. And they're saying, oh, past the hash is only being used by these three actor groups. It's like, great, guess what? Anybody with Kali is using past the hash. It doesn't really matter. So now you have to perform, um, now you have to perform some type of uh, severity analysis on how difficult is it to use this TTP? Is it really easy? Can everybody use it? Is it everywhere? Yes. Then just completely take that out. We, uh, it, we don't even want that in the map. We want all the things that are really difficult because now we can actually show, yes, they're, they're using this. So for instance, execution through API. Like if you're actually performing you know, attacks through APIs, you're probably a fairly advanced attacker. Like there's not a whole lot of people probably running around doing that. Um, WMI event subscription, for instance, um, that is pretty common actually in the last two years, but um, but then we get into like standard application protocols and, and different types of attack like that. So these are our anticipated um, potential sharing groups. So, um, you know, North Korea, Pakistan, um, actually I got these slides out of the way. These are the non-potential sharing groups. So let me go forward then. Um, okay, so here we go. So these are, are our potential sharing groups, like DL search order hijacking, APT uh, 27 and 10. It looks like that they're sharing TTP. Well, great. They're both in China. Of course they're sharing TTPs. That's not very helpful. Um, so pass the ticket, for instance. APT15 and Bronze Butler, both in China. Like, of course they're sharing that. They're probably being trained by the same group. And we go back and we say, okay, now these are some of our more questionable sharing things, um, unknown groups. Um, it's been said in multiple orgs that Muddy Water and Fin7 might actually be the same group, might just be spinoffs of that top level group. So as you start to look at their shared relationship of TTPs and then Cobalt Group, for instance, um, you know, it becomes kind of clear that they might be sharing not necessarily TTPs, but people. There's probably a person going from organization to organization using TTPs. Um, and then going back to this group, this again is kind of our, our non-anticipated TTP sharing of um, kind of what we're seeing. So execution through API is being used by 37, which is North Korea and Pakistan. Kind of a fairly difficult technique to use. And so how in the world is Pakistan using it? Like who are they learning from? Who are they getting this information from? So on and so forth. Um, you know, ABT29 and Leviathan and then three in Platinum. Um, as we start to see where we don't really know the attribution of the country, um, doing a little bit more deep dive of what that organization is and, and who they're using. Um, yeah, and so... Sorry, one sec. So as we're able to sort of put this information back together, the tracking and the, the, the predictions capabilities of, uh, of these attack metrics become easier for us to use in a you know, four to six month time period. I know that they're using this, I know who their targets are, I know where they're going, and, uh, and I know how to stop them. Um, so that was actually like, this is supposed to be a one hour talk and that was super quick, but uh, does anybody have any questions at all? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, earlier in your slide, you had the charts that had the spike and the. It looked like a series that I had. Okay. Uh, yeah, yep. This is a Y. Oh, of course. Yeah, no worries. Uh, hi there. So on this graph here, uh, it looks like the X axis is corresponding to dates. What was that Y axis corresponding to? Um, okay, so that's a great question. The Just to clarify here, I'll answer more than what, what you asked, but the colors in the center are the actor groups. On the left-hand side is the number of hits, maybe not necessarily associated with the same... Um, with the same, you know, signature. It might be like, well, these 15 signatures from this actor group are used over this time period. And so those are the number of hits for that actor group in that specific time period. About how many clients are you monitoring? Um, approximately, let's just say over 40. Yeah. Don't tell anybody I told you that. <laughs> What's up? How important is uh, attribution? Why is it attribution? That, that, that's a great question. So he, his question was, um, what's the importance of attribution and, why, and, and how can it be used? Why is it important? So if we know who the actor groups are targeting and we know that they're sharing 
techniques and we see one being used now and we know that they're about to share that technique with another group, we can be six months in advance of knowing, let's shore up on this tech, you know, to fight against this technique because we're about to see it in six months in the energy sector. So for instance, DHS in what, June of last year pushed out and said, we're about to see an increase in energy sector activity in the United, in US-based critical infrastructure. And then in November, guess what happened? We saw an increase in energy sector activity in the United States critical infrastructure. I mean, it was like, it was clear. So if we know what they're gonna use, we know where they're going, we know what's about to happen, we can we can sort of be um, preemptive about about blocking it. So does that answer your question? Yes. Great. Perfect. Yes, sir. So now are you say, um, yes, that, that's kind of ongoing. Because we've only been doing this for about 18 months, it's hard for us to prove out that, uh, that sort of analysis. But it is happening. Um, you know, we are not seeing a less mature organization using a TTB first and then giving it to 28. Most of the time, it's the other way around. Um, but again, I can't say definitively that that's actually happening because um, every once in a while, we see TTPs used at the same time and so on and so forth. And that's Sort of skews our metrics. Okay. Yep. Yes, sir. He's going to need a mic. Sorry about that. Can you elaborate on how you identify that a threat belongs to a particular PP? Yeah. A particular um, APT. So that's sort of a section that I left out. Um, so the, we, we do this on a program called um, Enhanced Cybersecurity Services, which is a DHS program, and we only use classified intelligence. So that classified intelligence is immediately linked. So again, I can't give that information to you, but that is how we're doing it. So, um, but most of the time, the IOCs are tied to known infrastructure, and as you know that infrastructure and you pull this information in for known reports, you can actually just create those same columns and then mark the, the actor group. So you can do the same data with the, I mean, so you can perform the same analysis with the, same, with the data that you have, it's just we're dealing with different data sets that are basically the same. Yes? Were you able to determine why in a certain month? Why is October hotter? That, that's a great question. Um, kind of. We actually think that, uh, that again, that it's people. Exactly. That there's a gigantic calendar on a whiteboard somewhere, and they're just marking these things down and saying, well, my son has soccer on Friday, so I need to do this on Tuesday. Yes, sir. That's, that's a great question. Again, we, we need to be very clear about what we're talking about here. They're not sharing infrastructure, they're sharing techniques. Is that what you meant to say? Yeah, hang on one sec. I'm losing about every other word, so can you give him the mic? Yeah. That's okay. Answer to your previous question, you you, um, you said that uh, one of the things you used to, to tie in everybody together um, uh, on the classified level, which we won't, guess we, we won't get into, um, is that they use common infrastructure. Common uh, techniques. Common, uh, com okay, common techniques. Yep. Okay. That has been my mistake. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's okay. Um, if I did say infrastructure... Um, well, so, no, infrastructure is how you tell who it is, the techniques can ripple down. Right, yep, exactly right, yep. So they don't share infrastructure. Right. Yeah. Well, not even generally. If they're sharing infrastructure, then that's like a surprise to everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, why would a nation state run so many of these APT groups? Why would a nation state run so many of these APT groups for the same nation state? Is it distinguished by target or? Um, that's a great question. I get, I'll, I'll try to answer that question generically. If I answer it specifically, I'll probably be giving away some of our own stuff. So I'll just sort of do it like generically here. Um, yes, I would say that they have different goals. Um, some goals are to track this and some goals are to track that. So say for instance, if you were working, you know, in Langley and then up in Maryland. Those two groups are gonna have different goals and guess what? Russia probably has APT group names for us and there's two of them. So, it just sort of makes sense. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's just wanting everybody to hear what the question is, so wait till you get the mic. Next question. Yes, sir. Hey, so you had mentioned that you used pandas, a little bit of Jupiter. Could you talk a little bit more about the tech stack that you find yourself working with uh, day in and day out? Did you say the tech? The, the, the tech stack, like uh, using uh, you ingest with Jupyter Notebooks, uh, using pandas. Is there anything else that you find useful to do this type of uh, analysis? Um, so now we'll kind of get into the conversation where I'm honest with everyone and I'm not a data scientist. So, um, you know, learning how to use pandas and you didn't, you're learning how to use, you know, so, um, uh, nested expressions and um, even the Jupyter Canvas, for instance, and NumPy arrays and everything like that. Like, I know how to use them now. But if you were to say, can you use this more advanced? Can you use this in a different way? The answer to the question is absolutely no. I have no idea. Um, at, you know, we have a, a couple of other orgs that it, within our shop at CenturyLink that helped me do this. And there are a bunch of PhD really smart people. And I say, hey, I need to make this make sense. I say, have you tried this yet? I didn't even know that was a thing, so no, I haven't tried that yet. So, and then I go and I do that. Um, if you have more questions about that specifically, um, you know, feel free to tag my handle and then hit me up, and I'll put you in I'll put you in contact with people who know answers to those types of questions. Who again is not me? Any other questions? Cool. Thanks so much, guys. Let's get 30 minutes back. See you guys around.